Hello, everyone, and welcome to LinkedIn Live Insights from a Headhunter. Today, we are going to talk how headhunters use LinkedIn to find candidates. And therefore, I have invited another headhunter, a multilingual one from the UK. Uh, Arpad Sakal is here to answer your questions and he is uh, specialized in aviation and defense, and he works as principal consultant at Cormis Partners for the industrial markets. And he is a ex um, aviation lawyer. So, uh, Arpa, thank you so much for for joining me to, tonight. Thank you for the for the opportunity, uh, Tina. Great to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm very excited to have this conversation um, because it's not always easy to know how headhunters uh, go about to find candidates. Yeah. Which, which um, tools do you use on LinkedIn? Um, we, uh, LinkedIn is one of the tools that we, we use. It's obviously it's a very important um, tool for us because um, um, 700 or maybe even more million people, uh, 100 million people are on it. Um, uh, it's really the premier job search platform. It provides job seekers and also employers alike with the opportunity to, to connect. So what we use LinkedIn for is really just to um, have an understanding of the market, um, understand the, uh, the, the, the talent pool, who's out there, what sort of companies are they working at, what, uh, what um, role are they pay, playing at the moment. And and um, see if they are relevant for the search that we are um, um, conducting at that, at that very moment, basically. So very important, and it's probably the uh, the best um, um, tool out there for, again, seekers and employers uh, alike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, what would you say uh, are the first steps that you're taking when... Um, like to, to explain uh, headhunters, it's executive search. So we work um, exclusively on assignments on behalf of, of a company. So um, you start with the job description and then how, how do you go about it? Yeah. Yeah, so we are retained exclusively on a mandate. So we are client driven, not candidate driven. We are not in the business of uh, finding people uh, opportunities or jobs. It's um, it's the organization that instructs us. Basically, they have a business problem that translates into a talent um, issue most of the time. And um, it's very often director, C-level uh, and above. Uh, sort of roles. Uh, globally, we are based in London, but um, we do most of our uh, uh, assignments in uh, Latin America, in North America, in the Middle East, in Africa, quite a lot, um, sometimes in Asia. So it's um, it's really it's a global um, sort of um, uh, focus that we have. Um, and the process, uh, Tina, is um, the following. We get the mandate, we prepare the um, the specification in which we describe the, um, uh, the various uh, uh, traits and characteristics that this individual will um, have to fulfill or meet. And then we create a target list of organizations, like uh, what are the what are the sectors that we are looking at, which are the companies within those sectors that we would like to target. Um, also the level, the seniority level of this individual, um, and identifying the relevant people within those uh, organizations, um, uh, right seniority levels, uh, business units, um, do like a proper market research. Uh, yeah. We put around 70, 80, 100, maybe even more people on the on the initial target list and then have start to, to have the, the approaches. And that's when we use um, LinkedIn, among other um, tools, basically. So um, if we don't have those individuals that we are trying to engage already in our network, then, of course, LinkedIn plays a very important um, part in that. Yeah. And, and what you said in the beginning is really important that... Um, who is paying for for your salary? It's the it's the companies, the organizations. Mm -hmm. So not the not the candidates. Not the other way around. Exactly. 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 So you you are reaching out to to people, and how do you go about to to find them on on LinkedIn? 
It's normally we use, I, I personally use LinkedIn Recruiter, which is a very yes. good sophisticated tool um, uh, that enables you to really just uh, uh, connect with people who are not even um, second degree connections or not yes. even third degree connections. So it, it gives you a really good picture of the of the market. Um, we use keywords. So it's, it's really, it's um, uh, not buzzwords. I would like to make a distinction between um, buzzwords and keywords. You know, buzzwords are normally things like hardworking, achievement oriented team player um, so, you know things that don't really play any uh, role they don't really say anything um, keywords on the other other hand are very succinct they are describing what the individual does are they an editor are they an expert are they a strategist are they a consultant are they are, are they uh, 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 what what is their uh, sort of um, differentiator basically that's that's what the keyword is and that's what and um, the section under your name, the headline, plays a very yeah. important role because uh, don't forget that uh, LinkedIn is a search engine and what you put there under your name um, in terms of words, keywords, will directly determine in what searches you are going to come up in, basically. And, and that's why I think with the recruiters had in mind, um, what... Um, uh, what sort of search term um, would I like my name to be associated with? Basically, I think that's a good question to ask. Am I a consultant? Am I a, a healthcare professional? And I'm, am I a, a financier, a banker, a um, um, a coach? I mean, whatever it is that you um, would like to brand yourself as, just make sure that the um, the section under your name um, is um, yeah. It, correctly represents that uh, aim basically. and the keywords um it, is it everywhere on your profile in in skills and in the headline uh, everywhere and basically wh whether you're describing your um uh, whether it's your about section whether it's your um linkedin banner i think it yes. does have a an effect on the on the algorithm whether you come up in a search uh, just make make sure that you don't include filler words. You don't include things that what, what I've mentioned earlier that are not really quantifiable, that are not really saying anything because anyone can say that they are a team player. Um, just make sure that uh, when you describe your experience in the experience section, uh, you really um, make sure that um, you give examples, concrete examples, uh, not only words, but numbers, digits, um, uh, uh, anything that can be quantified. How big was the team that you've managed? How big was the budget? Um, did you have any direct report? How many? Um, um, any kind of improvements, whether it's performance improvements or efficiency improvements. I mean, ev everything can be translated into digits, numbers, and that's what hiring managers and recruiters are are after. Um, uh, Tina, that's 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 yes. what's interesting. And and like you said, you work on a global scope. So yeah. if you are a team leader or manage people virtually, it's very important to to say uh, on which continents they were based. So that, yeah. that already gives uh, a lot of information as well. Exactly, exactly. Context is key. Yes. Uh, and and it's, it's it's not about writing long paragraphs, of course, on LinkedIn. It's 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 only to give the to give a flavor to the reader. Um, but I would really encourage you to basically just, uh, or anyone um, who's, uh, who's looking to get on the radar of uh, recruiters to, to give some context and to really just provide some uh, um, uh, story, narrative. Basically. Now that LinkedIn recruiter is, is like any uh, database or program, they are getting more and more efficient and upgraded. There, there is something, um, a new update when it says uh, more likely to engage when you do a database uh, search with the keywords. Yeah. Um, then, then there is this option more likely to to engage and and also uh, that this person has um, followed your company. So all all those. Um, uh, small data points come out in in the in in the search process. Yeah. Um, what what would you say about the open to to work um, tab around your picture? Um, 
There are two types of recruiters out there, um, I believe, um, Tina, uh, and one who is basically actively goes out and wants to initiate conversations with people who are in between roles, wants to actually help them, um, get them back on track and uh, wants to engage them. And then the other type who actively avoids uh, people who have that um, um, uh, sign there. Uh, the thinking behind that is that um, you don't have the relevant skill set, you don't have the relevant uh, sort of background education, uh, hard skills and soft skills. That's why you are out of a job uh, at the moment. And I think that's what, uh, uh, I mean, there's no right or wrong. I wouldn't say that there's a there's a right or wrong here, but uh, uh, just bear in, bear in mind that some recruiters have a negative sort of um, uh, view on Bias. individuals who are, uh, especially us, like when you are talking to retained search consultants, I mean, our job is to get the best of the best i mean we are essentially we're cherry picking uh people here it's uh, and also we're not in the business of of uh, helping individuals into into roles but um, our job or our mandate is um, um for the client to really get the best uh, individual in the role basically that's what we are paid for um not for anything else really so yeah so there is this one open to work, the circle that you put around your profile. This is uh, visible for your whole network. Yeah. And there is the other part on your profile that's only visible to uh, recruiters who use LinkedIn recruiters. So not even LinkedIn recruiter light, but the but most the, expensive the most, yeah. version. Yeah, And, and mm -hmm. there you can specify, so other people will not see that, but there you can specify which types of um, uh, positions you're open to. And I think it's really helpful, by the way. Yes. I think you should have that on because that helps the, the recruiter to know that, yeah, you're looking, um, they can initiate a conversation with you. And I think it's fairly um, uh, safe if you're still in a job or if you're looking. Or if you, I think um, um, uh, there's a function there that enables that only like people within your organization won't uh, see that. I mean, whether you would like to trust that or not, I mean, it's, 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 I will leave it up to the, um, to the individual. But I think you know, from, a, from the view of a... Headhunter or recruiter, I think it's it's a really helpful um, tool because uh, it means that you will talk to us basically. Yes, and and you can choose also what you put there. If yeah. if you are open to, for example, mentoring jobs um, that that has no uh, conflict of interest with your current role, um, so just just to put out there what what would be your dream role where yeah. you're aspiring and also um, there you have different um, levels of if you're uh, actively applying at the moment or if you're uh, just open uh, so exactly and the bring... more context and the more information yes. you give yes. the better and i would encourage anyone to, to to do that already in the about section maybe just a few bullet points about what you bring to the table your your unique selling proposition and then once you're done with that then maybe just especially if you're actively uh, seeking a new role uh, it's really helpful to just include okay these are the sort of organizations that i'm interested in these are the sort of geographies the sort of companies sectors and um, uh, and that helps the recruiter Im immensely uh, because they will know that yeah that will probably be right or no that's a waste of everyone's time basically so that that's that's why um, give context and unlike your cv which is a laser sharply tailored document uh, linkedin gives you the chance to give a bit of a context and narrative basically in terms of where are you today and where you would like to get to Yes, and I, I think it's um, very important that you have clarity what you're looking for. So it's easier for other people in your network also to um, to help you to, to reach that goal. And, yeah. and like I mentioned, you are into uh, engineering, infrastructure, yeah. manufacturing, aviation, defense. Yeah. That's, that is really your area. So people who are active or who want to come to that industry, they really should look, um, contact headhunters in, in that field. So what would be a, a good way to, to approach uh, a headhunter? 
I think probably the best way is to, I mean, through LinkedIn, that's a really good way to do it. Uh, an email, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I think you really need to do your homework first. If you are in the yeah. energy space, if you're in the oil and gas space, then you really need to make a list of those five to 10, maybe even 15 headhunting or, or retained search organizations who are doing that. And then even within those firms, you need to identify those five, six people, consultants or associates, researchers, who will be relevant for you specifically. So basically, that the, the more relevant your approach is, or your background is, the more likely they're going to talk to you and we just uh, um, have a have a, an exploratory conversation in terms of what you're looking for um, and where are you interested in uh, applying. But again, um, a written approach is probably the best one and a very uh, thought through, very thoughtful approach uh, showing that you've done your research, you've done your homework, and it's not just a uh, an approach out of the blue. Basically, I think that's uh, that's going to be appreciated by uh, by anyone. So. And and how do you know if uh, if a headhunter is active on LinkedIn? Uh, I think it's basically just have a look at their activity tab and then you see how, how often they are uh, on it. I think more and more people are on it. I think the search industry is still one of those really hidden, sort of not, not a lot of people um, are even aware of it, only those who whom it, whom it concerns, so the very senior uh, people. Um, but... Um, I'm trying to change the, the status quo as well because I'm trying to really just share some uh, know-how, share some uh, insights uh, so that it's helpful to individuals outside, basically, or even the job seekers. Because I think there's not an awful lot of information out there. And I think search firms are not doing a good enough job to advise uh, mid to senior level um, uh, managers, leaders uh, on uh, career planning, career development um, areas, basically. So... And, and I, I think it's, it's a really good uh, way to, to approach it, to, to find out w which headhunter is the one in your market, in the geography, and also in the industry, and reach out to them. But not just only once, but build a relationship. Exactly. Exactly. It's not, it shouldn't be just a one-off conversation. It should be really something that you are really building up on, uh, checking back with them from time to time, periodically, every two, three months. I think that's a, that's a healthy um, um, sort of um, time period. But uh, but also really making sure that you are also adding value, even if they uh, even if they work on a search that you are not the right one for. Oh like yes, a, the right. I think basically just give some um, uh, be a source. Like, uh, do you know anyone who they can? I think uh, having this uh, mutually beneficial sort of relationship had uh, uh, on. I think it's just really important because if you help them, they're going to help you as well, basically, and they're going to pick up the phone to you next time um, they work on something that is indeed relevant uh, for you. So always try to help, always try to assist, and always take the call because um, that's how you build relationships. And, and I'm so happy that um, not so long ago, uh, the LinkedIn, it changed because in, in the past, when, when I reached out to a candidate um, f for a job, um, that was not something that they were at the moment interested in, and they clicked on the auto reply, um, no, no, thank you, or not interested. Then it cut off all the communication line. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually possible to send uh, communication, but in the past, if if you weren't interested uh, and you just said no, thank you, uh, I couldn't even ask you if if you could source exactly, anyone or, exactly. or just talk exactly. about what you would like exactly. in the future because I think most uh, relationships start with I'm not the one for you at this moment but uh, I could think of somebody else exactly don't just think about yourself always I mean it, it, it can happen that it's not going to be right for you um, but it's basically, who knows, you might have a good, really good network, uh, you can benefit the other person. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not always the recruiter who uh, who helps. I mean, sometimes they need help. And uh, if you ask me what is the best way to, um, to develop a, a good, solid, long-term relationship with them, uh, like career-long relationship with them, it's this. Exactly. Uh, so... Um... 
let me have a look. What is a question uh, that that I w wanted to have clarity? Is it in headhunters' interest that you get hired? Uh, well, if you are one of the finalist candidates, uh, if you, yeah, of course. I mean, it's basically. Um, um, uh, it's it's in everyone's interest. I mean, it's basically if the if the if the shortlisted candidate gets hired, then of course we uh, we get paid. I mean, it's basically it's uh, it's um, um, it's good for uh, for everyone, and most definitely it's it's in everyone's uh, interest. The job seekers or the the, the person who's be, being interviewed for that's in their best interest, and also the um the organization and of course us the um the the in-between person so yeah so and you're solving a problem for the organization uh for hr for the hiring manager so actually everyone um it's it's a win-win for for everyone so it's a win-win-win basically that's for all three parties involved basically the 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 candidate, the organization, and of course the um, the agent in between. So the the in between it, it's 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 not one side or the other. It's really helping to facilitate and yeah. and attract the the best talent to to the organization at at the time. Exactly. Exactly. It's so difficult to really get people from A to B at the moment. Um, you know, I th I'm, I'm sure that you, uh, you're experiencing the same thing. It's a very candidate driven market. People, good people have several options. And I think if you're a hiring organization, you really need to treat the candidates as, as gold dust, really, because you, you need them much more uh, in most cases than they need you. So uh, I think it's basically just um, um, having that mindset that, yeah, this is a scarce uh, resource. I really need them in the long run. So even if I don't hire them now, I would like to keep up the conversation maybe with the finalist candidates, that two or three, uh, because you never know when you uh, might have a need when they are going to be the right ones. So just careful how you treat uh, candidates uh, today because uh, uh, you need them more than you think. And and also, if if they will not join your organization, they will become your competitors or are mm -hmm. your competitors. So uh, it's it's always important to to treat everyone um, nicely. So it, and it, your brand ambassadors, and if they have a bad experience, like candidate experience, they are going to be. I mean, you can be sure that ten others or maybe even more people oh, will yes. be notified about that because bad news spreads faster than good. So um, I think it's 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 really important that you um, you think twice how you um, how you communicate how you leave things with them because um, it can backfire quite uh, quite quickly. So uh, we have some comments here. Uh, uh, we have Annette Richmond, who is uh, executive uh, resume writer, and uh, she says. Um, love to hear you say el eliminate those fluff words because that that's really important that that you use the the star method that you bring the situation task yeah. Yeah, yeah. action and results uh, and not only the beautiful words but really something that that makes sense and um, ha has context yeah Exactly, exactly. Something that um, shows and demonstrates with concrete examples why you are the right uh, person for that business challenge. Because all the uh, recruitment efforts, especially at senior level, they are business challenges and they just need the right resource to, to solve those um, issues and uh, problems that an organization faces. So. And... Um... Let me see. We have also Jayant joining us from India. Uh, yes, headhunters do have interest to close the position as well as hiring team. And, and headhunter is also somebody in between who brings value to, to both sides. So got, giving you um, much better understanding about the organization uh, because they know the hiring manager, they know the company culture, they know the HR, uh, they can brief you in more details than you will see from the 
just a job description online and just from 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 the website yeah yeah and also for 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 the organization so sometimes um w when we are working or it's difficult to see our own label what are our strengths uh when when people um look for new opportunities it's easier somebody else sees your excellence um and and markets it's better than than you can do yeah. so yeah. though what would you say um what is your prediction for for 2022 in in recruitment and job search um, um i think um the the the, the top one will be um a shortage of um, good, high-quality uh, candidates who are really uh, uh, willing to uh, move and and are right. <laughs> so it, it's uh, there's scarcity at the moment, especially on the top. Um, people who are uh, really good, they are well remunerated, well looked after, and it's really tricky to um, to attract them. I think it's basically the whole candidate experience thing is going to be crucial. How you are treated. Um, I think a lot of companies um, really have a lot to do in terms of uh, candidate management, in terms of uh, candidate experience, um, how they leave conversations with them. I think that's one thing. The other one uh, I wanted to mention is, is um, um, obviously, everyone is talking about the great um, uh, resignation. I think that's going to be um, um, continuing throughout the year. Uh, people are uh, very, very uh, short on patience when they don't really get at, the, at an organization where they are what what they want, then they uh, they move on. It's basically it's it's um, um, it's interesting to see how um, uh, patience levels have dropped basically. And I speak to a lot of disgruntled people who are who have been pushing for a promotion, more money, better mm. opportunities, uh, better bosses, uh, leadership opportunities, things like that. And, and if they don't see that happen in, the, in in like a year or two or three, then they they um, uh, they move on and they seek out um, other opportunities. And I don't think it's going to um, um, subside basically. That's 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 what uh, what I would uh, uh, say. Uh, not only in the US, of course, but also we are seeing that in Europe as well. So it's um, um, uh, people are very, very uh, picky and uh, rightly so. I mean, there's no shortage of opportunities either, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the war on talent. Exactly. Uh, that, I mean, it's that, it's, that it's, it's just to... going to intensify, really. I mean, it's, that's what we are seeing, regardless of the sector and also regardless of the um, of the seniority as well. And what would you advise to your um, clients, the organizations, uh, when when they are hiring new people? Speed matters i think it's gone are the days when you could just basically uh, deliberate on things for for many many weeks uh, i mean good people have multiple offers at any given time basically and it, and, and, and just uh, hoping that they don't have that's foolish i think pace you really need to if you want someone you need to get them in at pace um, also uh, compensation um, uh, salary levels i mean if you really want uh, top performers, top people, you need to open up your purse and basically pay what uh, uh, above, well above the the market rate. What we are um, uh, experiencing also um, location. I mean, it's it's, um, it's tricky to move people across countries and across continents. I think um, organizations who are really agile, who can really make this um, working from the distance work, yeah. they will be at an advantage. So. Um, 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 even leaders, team leaders, um, we see them that they're just, yeah, uh, flying in and out, but they don't uh, permanently relocate. So, yeah, those which, are the things that come Which is easier, to... yeah. When when you have a, a family situation, you don't mm -hmm. have to relocate the whole family. If, if exactly. it's possible to do the work remotely, and we have seen it during the past two years, it's possible exactly. uh, in, in, in a way that wasn't... Uh, wasn't practiced before so yeah yeah and yeah. I, I also agree with you pace is so important because um 
as as soon as um, there there are steps and it's going in in the right direction, there there is a process. Um, people are engaged and uh, candidates are are warm, but uh, the, yeah, it, it it's human to to feel the rejection or if if you don't hear anything back to start thinking that maybe there is something wrong and i think yeah. it's so much about the momentum because yeah. once you get a call from a headhunter th there is this thought process that uh, starts in your head and maybe yeah. you won't go with the offer uh, that the person proposed but if you start thinking about moving, uh, I, I often see that people with whom I was in, in contact in June, um, they have changed jobs anyways yeah. um, after a couple yeah. of months. So it's, um, it, it, you really have to act fast when... when uh, exactly. Otherwise, you don't have the chance, basically. That's, that's the current reality, basically. Those who are serious, they act fast. Those who are... Um, uh, not they are lagging behind basically that's the that's the uh, um, and layers of um, decision makers uh, various stakeholders I mean yes. it's difficult for big organizations it's difficult but you really need to get your your act together because um, otherwise others will basically. yes uh, and I, I saw a post um, th that you talked about uh, the the CVs. If the choice is uh, sending sending an updated CV um, after the weekend or sending one now, which which one would you opt for? Uh, send send one now. It's basically because that's what I was talking about the pace and the speed uh, in that in that um, uh, post as well. Um, it's better to have something over than not. That, that, that's the general rule and then you can always follow it up with a more up-to-date cv yes they need it now especially contingency recruiters who are paid who are paid on um, uh, success so yeah and and also i think it, it tells a lot a lot when when somebody says i will send you my cv over the weekend and and they will do that that builds yeah. trust and and trust is so important so um by the time uh, a headhunter presents you to a hiring manager, they have interviewed you, they have had several communications yeah. with you, and um, and if if just one good impression builds on another, uh, very quickly you you get very deep into a relationship. Where, yeah. When I know more about the candidate than the, their friends and colleagues, uh, when what are their, um, yeah. What are they dream goals um, when it comes to their career and and their values? So quickly, quickly it it develops. Yeah, exactly. And it all matters, and it all uh, adds up. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We have uh, a comment here from uh, Uwe. I find a tip about building up a longer term working relationship with the headhunter to be an interesting one. Yeah, it's it's really. Um, like any relationship in 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 your life, it's it's not just a quick win. It's really long term ones that that I would focus on. Yeah, no, definitely because it pays off uh, sooner or yes. later. Yeah. Yes. So we have a comment from uh, Sandy from Colorado. Uh, first experience with a headhunter was when I first moved here. He was so pushy about placing me into a contract job that had no medical benefit. It was also uh, put offering taking our position that had benefits because it was a vital one for me. Uh, and he continued to guilt me because uh, I required benefits. It really turned me off to headhunters. Mm -hmm. it may have been just him. So it's it's a very good point. And and as, as a headhunter, um, we give a guarantee that the person will, will stay in the position as well. And mm -hmm. if somebody is pushed into a position, they, they will not stay. So I will have to start over the, the search again. So it's not a good solution yeah. uh, for anyone. 
Yeah, be careful because there are a lot of yeah. cowboys uh, out there who are using very unprofessional sort of tactics to to push you into things that you shouldn't be pushed into. So, uh, just a word of caution: uh, always qualify uh, the person. Ask who who are they working for? Is it a retained search? Is it not? I mean, it's, it's a two way conversation as well. It's not only just uh, you have to answer questions. You need to yes. answer uh, good. Um, uh, you need to ask good questions as well of them. Basically, what type of clients do they? They work with whom what frequency things like like things that reveal whether they are good quality or not that's, that's that would be my sort of um, tip yeah yeah so it's really about uh, two-way communication like during the interviews uh, it's not interrogations it's yeah. y- you are <laughs> also um, I, I think the, the candidates who have impressed me the most are the ones who go do the research and come back with questions where they really have understood the the company's problems uh, and indicating which direction the solution could go and yeah. and this this is even better than answering any any question so yeah. really um, t- t- be in charge um, of of the situation, of the situation. yeah yeah so before we uh, close, I would like to ask, what is the best way uh, to find you, uh, how to stay in touch with you? And um, you also work as an um, uh, executive and business coach, So, and you share a lot of value on, on LinkedIn. How could people find you? I think the best one is is really finding me on on LinkedIn. It's Arpad uh, Sakal. Um, I think it's basically if you would like to connect with me, if you would like to um, to have a chat, really uh, happy to do so. Even uh, like a brief introductory um, conversation, very happy to um, to do that. It's um, Cormispartners.com. That's another way. It's uh, C O R M I S Cormis Partners in one word, .com, that's where you can find me um, and and our um, uh, contact details as well. And if you would like to really get onto our radar, the best thing is to maybe uh, send an email or or um, send me an invite here on LinkedIn. Uh, and again, very happy to um, to have a conversation and see if, uh, uh, very happy to, to give you any feedback as well on um, um, any current career marketing documents if you if if you need that but it's it's um it's uh, generally linkedin is probably the best way yeah so um the the takeaway from today is really f- fill in the keywords and and not the fluffy ones but the yeah. ones that you want to be uh, found for and build long term relationships with um uh, with with headhunters in yeah. your own industry and geography where you aspire to to work in the future on long term. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, and and really be um, helpful so that they can help you in the future. Yeah. So uh, Sandy says thank you. I really appreciate your input, and I agree. Thank you so much, Arpad. Yeah. No, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity, Dina. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye-bye. Bye.